Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about unlocking Captain in Risk of Rain 2 in the quickest time possible. Captain is the last survivor to be unlocked in Risk of Rain 2, and he is one of the hardest survivors to unlock. To unlock the Captain in Risk of Rain 2, and this is spoilers for the end of the game, so don't watch this video if you don't want to know the ending, you have to defeat the final boss, the moon boss, Mithrix. You will only be able to defeat Mithrix on stage 6. This is the moon stage, and to get there, you will have to go to stage 5 and use the Primordial Teleporter. Now, the Primordial Teleporter will usually be shifted towards the moon immediately. What this means is that the teleporter will take you to the moon and not loop you around again. If you use the Primordial Teleporter on the outside, it will actually shift destinations and change where you go. If the text in the chat says that it is aligned with the moon, you will be going to the moon, and if it says it's aligned with the planet, you will be looping again. If you loop again, you will obviously not do the boss battle until you go all the way around again and then shift it towards the moon and then take the primordial teleporter to the moon. This is not recommended as Mithrix actually scales insanely with time. He is basically old allied worship unit and Aurelian knight for any of those who knew what they were before they were nerfed. So usually you will always want to go on the first loop. Alright, so here's going to be my description of the boss battle so you know what to expect and then we'll go into the strategy of actually how to beat him. Alright, so when you go to the moon, you'll have to traverse this parkour-ish area and get all the way up to his arena. Try to avoid falling off at all costs, as there is a certain area on the map that will trap you if you do not have enough mobility to jump back onto the bridge. I was doing this run as Engineer on Monsoon, and I was pretty much in a god run, so I would have beaten the game on Monsoon. However, I got trapped on the island and I couldn't escape, so I just had to leave the game and start over. So whatever you do, don't fall off. Alright, so once you actually get to the arena, Mithrix will spawn. This is phase one and he will do very basic attacks. He will shoot kind of like the needle gun, the visions of heresy type thing. They do actually a decent amount of damage, so avoid these. And then he will teleport around trying to hit you with his hammer. If he hits you with his hammer, this is about half of your health, even if you're a tanky or survivor. So try to avoid him at all costs. Get as many mobility items as you can before the boss fight, or he will just kill you. There is basically no way to avoid it if you don't have enough mobility. Every now and then, he will jump back in the air, land in the center, and cause a 360 shockwave around the stage. Avoid this as it does a lot of damage and can one-shot you. It's pretty easy to dodge, I think even without a hapu feather you can jump over it, but you should be pretty solid as long as you just make sure to avoid the shockwave. Alright, once you get his health down all the way, now you go into phase 2 and the terrain changes. Also, there will be two more enemies spawning, the Lunar Chimera and the Lunar Chimera Wisps. You will have to kill these and then you will be into phase 3. Be very careful with these as the Lunar Chimera Wisps will shoot like a tracking ball at you that has one-shotted me randomly. They are definitely not to be messed with, and I would get rid of the aerial units as soon as possible. Alright, once you've cleared out all of these, Phase 3 will start, and you will randomly have the ground units, the Lunar Tremere Golems, start to spawn around with him. Mithrix attacks are more powerful, and they start to become a little bit different. He attacks way more often, and he leaves a slam that will have a pillar of flames that damage the player if they walk into it. One of my friends thought that this was a way to jump up in the air, and I had to correct him before he immediately burned to death. It's a fairly straightforward stage and it's much like phase one, just more damage and more often. Once you drain all of his health in this phase, you will go into phase four. Now phase four is essentially a DPS check. What I mean is, is when he goes to the platform, he will be vulnerable before the stage actually starts, or the phase, my bad. What happens in phase four is Mithrix actually steals all of your items and gains their buffs. If you hit Mithrix, some of your items will come back, however, I've got him to around 25% of my health and only got about three of my items back. The worst part about this phase is that if you actually let him take all your items and he continues throughout the phase, he will occasionally kneel and fire traveling orbs in eight directions which will then loop back, so even if you dodge them the first time, they will come back and usually hit you. They are incredibly hard to dodge, especially with no items, so no mobility, and if you have any on-hit effects, those will apply to you as well. So basically, your only goal in Phase 4 is to kill him before he gets to Phase 4. You have all of your items momentarily, and he will go to the center of the map. You have to DPS check and kill him right then, right there, or else you essentially won't survive. If you have a medkit, which medkit got recently buffed, it heals like 5% of your health or something like that per stack. So if there are multiple players and he takes multiple medkits, he can heal nearly to full. This makes it almost impossible to kill him if you don't DPS check. Alright, but let's say that you did actually kill him in phase 4. The aftermath is the moon will be detonating. 
you have four minutes to reach the shuttle, aka the spawn area, or the moon will explode, you die, and you won't get the achievement. All you have to do is backpedal, and usually you'll have a lot of mobility items by stage six, so you should be pretty solid here. Just make sure not to fall off like I said, or you could get trapped on that island. Well, let me tell you, nothing is more frustrating than beating this hard boss and then not being able to actually get Captain Unlocked because you couldn't make it back in time. So once you make it back in time, you have won the game and you'll get a specific cutscene based on what character you are playing and you will unlock the captain. So that's the boss battle in general. Let me tell you some tips on how to beat him, what you need to do, etc, etc. When it comes to his first phase, the first phase is pretty easy. You just have to DPS him and avoid getting hit by his hammer. Usually grabbing a hapu feather, a wax quail, etc, etc, or just being a mobile survivor is going to be enough. If you're an engineer, having a bustling fungus and an Aegis basically makes your turrets invincible so they can just tank him while you shoot him. Once you get into phase 2, that's pretty simple as well. All you have to do is kill the trash mobs that spawn afterwards. However, once you get into phase 3, this becomes a little bit more difficult. Not because his attacks become more powerful or it becomes quicker or anything like that. Instead, it's because he goes to the center of the map during stage 3 and starts shooting off this wave that kind of looks like a revolving door, and if it hits you, it does a massive amount of damage. He does this several times in a row, and if you get hit by it several times in a row, you'll die. The best way I have found to counter this is that there are some slopes that you can go on top of. I have not been hit ever since I've discovered these slopes. So once you see that he's going for that attack, just go up on top of those slopes as far back as you can and he won't be able to hit you with it. Maybe this will be patched out in the future, but for now, this is a pretty safe zone. I've also heard that if you get high enough in the air with certain survivors, maybe mercenary or loader, you will not be hit by the waves as well. Now for phase 4, this is extremely difficult to do. The DPS check is almost impossible depending on how good your run was. What I have found, however, is that a prion accumulator actually works pretty well. If you have a prion and a couple of fuel cells, or just a couple of prions and a couple of friends, if you all shoot at Mithrix at the same time, or if you're alone with a couple of fuel cells, just spam your Q as soon as he goes to the center of the map, you can basically take out all of his health at once. And even if you don't get all of his health, usually you should be able to finish the DPS check after a couple of prions. I've tried this strategy on Drizzle and the normal difficulty, I don't remember what it is, I don't usually play it, but I haven't tried this on Monsoon yet. On Monsoon, I kind of just relied on my turrets to kill him and DPS check with me, so I didn't really need it. Also, and this is a little bit of a tip for you, if you are playing Engineer, Mithrix will not take your turrets items. This means if you place both down before the fight begins and before he takes your items, even if you lose all of your items, the turrets will still have them. This makes it so the Engineer essentially doesn't have to worry about Phase 4 as much as the other survivors do. If you just put a shield down on top of your turrets, usually they can hit them enough that you'll gain some of your items back. Or they could even kill Mithrix for you as they should be pretty stacked at this point. The one thing that I really have to point out when playing against Mithrix is if you have medkits and if he steals them, do not ever stop DPSing him. If he takes your medkits, he will be healing several percent of his health each time but only after he stops taking damage. That's the one negative effect of having a med kit, by the way. So the second you stop DPSing him, he could gain upwards of 100k health just because he has med kits. Remember, this guy has like a million health depending on when you fight him and how many players are in the game. The only two items that Mithrix won't steal are Tougher Times and Razor Wire. I mean, he will steal them, however, they won't be effective. I mean, could you imagine a million health boss using Razor Wire? No. Also, a million health boss having tougher times? No. So that is my strategy on how to beat Mithrix as quickly as possible. If you don't have a prey on, you could use the Royal Capacitor. However, you're going to require a lot more fuel cells for this to work. Also, probably avoid Gesture of the Drown as it will automatically make you use your prey on. So just roll with the prey on and fuel cells. Don't go for the Gesture of the Drown. I guess I'll use this a little bit of time I have left to describe what survivors I think are the best. So Huntress is number one in my book. She has the most DPS out of all the survivors. Bring her Ballista. Do not bring Arrow Rain. Bring the Ballista as it does a whopping amount of damage and the second survivor I would bring for this battle is definitely engineer as the phase 4 will be almost entirely negated by having turrets down also the effectiveness of items on the engineer are 
tripled every time you get an item, and because Mythic scales so well, you're going to be needing as much efficiency as possible. Also, I'm not sure if this is a bug, however, I've seen that Artificers have the Execute Threshold when dealing with Mythrix. So if you use your freeze attacks, he will actually have the execute threshold. I don't recommend playing the artificer as she scales really badly with items and she also has no mobility so during the boss fight it's going to be almost impossible to avoid him. But the execute threshold is really interesting and you might want to bring an extra one if you have a friend. So if you're playing with a 2 stack or multiple stack, bring an artificer just in case as the execute threshold might work. So those are my three survivors. There is one more thing. I know that this video is getting a little long and it's supposed to be how quick you can do it and it's like 11 minute long video, but you know, let's go with this one more thing. If you actually decide to use artifacts to do this instead of just going in legit, I suppose, I don't know, legit, quote unquote, but if you decide to use artifacts, here are the best artifacts to go. The Artifact of Glass, which gives you 500% damage but 10% health. Run this on Loader. Then, the Artifact of Command, which allows you to choose your items. Optional, but you can choose this. The Artifact of Sacrifice, which drops items from enemies. And finally, Artifact of Swarms, which monster spawns are doubled, but monster maximum health is halved. This will actually end up with two Mithrixes during the final boss battle. However, their health will be so minuscule that if you have Artifact of Glass and you are playing Loader, you will basically be able to one-punch them both. One of the quickest strategies I've seen with this is running Razor Wire and Hellfire Tincture. That way you can use your Razor Wire to hit him from afar, and that way you don't have to rely on your Loader Punch. But you could also stack ATGs or something like that with a bunch of damage. Honestly, as long as you get there quick enough, it really doesn't even matter if you have items as you're going to be doing a lot of damage with the Artifact of Glass and they're not going to have a lot of health because their health is halved. You can expect to actually beat this boss in like 10 minutes or maybe even 12 depending on how quick you are. But that's only if you want to use artifacts or if you have artifacts available to you, so it's kind of a restricted strategy. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully this was helpful to you, and if it was, you know, leave a comment, you know, subscribe or something like that. And if it wasn't, leave a comment. See what I could have, you know, added to the video, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, have a good day. Hope you enjoy Risk of Rain 1.0.